welcome to Georgie's Gun Dogs at Trails for Tails Dog Training. Hello and welcome everyone. Again, hello subscribers and new ones. And um, again, thanks for all the lovely comments. Um, it's been really nice. It keeps me going, basically. It gives me feedback and I, I like the fact that um, people are requesting or asking a bit of advice here and there. That's really nice. I like this. It's it's a good little uh, relationship going on um, with you all um, and it's nice, it's great, like I said in all of my videos, it's just great to hear you're all out there using my stuff and enjoying it and getting benefits from it, that's that's all that matters, you know, that's what that's what I wanted from these people to enjoy their training with their dogs, have a, have a good relationship but also have some fun and also learn the gun dog stuff really. Um, so I've done this video because a lot of people recently have obviously been practicing the learning the cue of the stop whistle so some people are like how can i progress it on to another stage now so some people are thinking how can i progress it on at distance okay so we're going to talk about the stop at distance first before we get to the training side of it and what we use it for um so a lot of people say to me once they start learning the cue and i always say this to people you're learning the cue first don't worry but unfortunately people still give it a go and you will get some of them dogs who will just stop randomly but a lot don't when when we're training that stop away from us we are always doing it in an exercise when we're first teaching it i wouldn't expect if i was let's say i was going for a normal walk an all bumble and i've been teaching the cue face me face me yeah be still stop what you're doing and face me because i've been doing it around me a lot of people say oh they, they run back to me when they do it well that's because in that picture of learning in that early stages you have taught it either with the food which is obviously quite close by you and with the pretend throw some will go out further and they'll stop um but it's always an orientation around us because we're just learning that stop learning to stop and face you so that early stages when you're asking for that distance a field away it's probably not going to happen because you haven't put that into their picture also that a lot of people say they try and stop them on the run out on retrieves and stuff and they've only stopped, just learned the cue again that is a training picture your dog hasn't learned okay so that's just feedback to you that they they understand it here because that's where you've taught it in that training picture so now you want to progress it on like I always say with anything, don't run before you can walk. And when we train to start teaching the dog to st one stop on commitment, because a lot of the time when they're away from you, they're committed to something. So they might be committed on a retrieve. Um, hunting, which depends which breed. So if you've got your HPRs and pointers, they're going to be away from you and committed in the hunting. Um, your spaniels are likely to be close to you. But let's say like retrieving. A retrieve... Once they're committed to that tree, it, it's a very hard thing to get them to stop on it. But it's important and it's a skill they need to know. Because let's say on a shoot, um, you're going for that particular bird that's down, but then, then a runner pops up. You've got to be able to stop that dog and cast that dog to where the runner's going. So it, it could be taking your line spot on. Yep, it's going to pick that one that's nice to please there. But we, as priority have to get the runner first because we have to be dispatched that as humanely and fastly as possible okay so if we get a runner that will always be priority over the bird that's on the floor now don't take that with a pin don't run with that people though doesn't mean if you've got an obvious dog go and put them on runners i wouldn't advise that okay that's a different conversation altogether so don't take that and go well i'm going out my first dog this season i need to make sure priority on runners right not in your first season if you're a novice a dog and a novice uh handle away or just a novice dog on its first shoot please do not do that again i will talk if you i will talk more about shoot situations of how to introduce a new dog on a shoot and that coming up to season because i will be doing it with mine who's not done a shoot yet um my little city um unfortunately i lost my main boy um anyway guessing off track so imagine that's the scenario the dog's than the training da, da, da. we want that dog to, to stop on commitment of that let's say bird that's gone down and oh no runners come off right so someone said george is a runner there right stop him right i need you to stop leave that basically and then i'm going to cast you to where i want you 
another picture is sometimes they'll go out they'll take your line they'll get to an area or they've hunted it too wide and you want to bring them back sometimes you need to bring them back so you'll stop them and put them back onto your line or stop them and tell them actually it's to hunt right hunt 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 left hunt right you know um another one might be is they've run your line and then they start to skew off you can stop them and put them back on your line okay so it's all about handling it's all about working as a partnership at a distance now this shouldn't be every tree every retrieve that you do because otherwise if you this is another thing with now when you're coming to stop at a distance don't make that your priority on everything because people love to stop whistle people get addicted they love to show they can handle but actually the best dog is the one that will get to the bird the quickest get to the rabbit the quickest get it efficiently and fastly and get it back to you that is the one but you need the support of the stop just in case because even the best dog with the best nose and the best lines and everything may at times need handling so you need a bit of both but like i said don't make it so if you oh i've seen so many handlers once they learn this stop their dog on nearly every retreat and then the problem becomes the dog gets out there and it starts to face the handler before it's even at the area or it gets to the area and stop because they start to go i can't do it officially until i'm without you or they lose confidence in their own ability so it's a fine line with this when training your stop whistle. It's a fine line because, I, like I said, I see many dogs that just sit up before and, and the owner's like, oh, it's doing it again. And I'm like, have you done stop loads? And they're like, yeah. I said, well, he's just waiting for you to literally. And there'll be times it could be a simple retrieve and they've overdone it. And the dog sat up before it's even got it's got in the area. It's not sure. It's uncomfortable. Oh, you're going to stop me anyway. All oh, they sometimes just anticipate the stop so they, they have you've obviously got a limit as well some people have a limit of where they averagely usually put the stop on the dog knows it dog's patterned it and he just sits you're gonna stop me now aren't you not that they might not woe and wind it they just know what's going to happen so it's important when you start trying to stop at distance you're just teaching the dog at a distance at the moment don't put the retrieves in yet don't put whatever in yet instead whatever just again this is the next progression from the first start of learning the cue to now okay i'm going to teach a run out and a stop a run out and a stop yep that's all i want and you're just teaching them to have that run towards so in this clip and i've got a lot of ways i teach stop at a distance and it all depends on the dog but i like this one because majority of dogs if you have done like i said in the earlier things built value in that place board you've also i put a video up and if you followed it right you to start bringing them, sending them at a distance to that place. But now what we're going to do is we are going to bring all three together with the stop. So we've got, we've got, the, they, they, they target it. Now I can do distance to the place board. I know it's actually four. They've learned the cue of the stop. Now I'm going to bring the stop on that place board. So what we're going to do in this, in this clip is, We'll have the board out. We'll line them up so they learn to follow your line as well. Line them up to board. We will say the cue for the board. So for me, it's place. As soon as that dog hits the board, I'm going to put my stop on. Right? As soon as I see them paws touch the surface, I'm going to put my stop whistle on because the dog should get on and face me. Bang. And what I'll do then is go over to that board. And I'll be paying them in that position. Yes, 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 yes. That's what I want. Okay. Some dogs, I might throw some into them because that's another thing. I want them to learn that they get the reward where they are. You don't want to be stopping them as punishment out there because you'll get some dogs who'll just ignore you. Right. It's whatever. I'm off. Okay. And then you'll get others that worry. And I want, and it's not just about the worry. I want a confident dog who enjoys stopping for me. Like, oh, something good's going to happen now, right? Or when they are a bit unsure out there, I've stopped them. They, they go, oh, mum's going to mum's gonna go, I read those on it. Because I'd have probably built exercise in it. She's going to help me out. So we're a team. Because it's stopping at distance is about teamwork. Well, everything is teamwork. But I want them to trust me because you are going to get some dogs as well who are the opposite who are like whatever i know where it is i've got a good nose you're rubbish and i'm not listening to you because i've got one of them and he 
he's getting there now with that stop at the distance it was a real real like trust me and i had to make sure where my timing on my stopping when i was progressing off the board and everywhere else that he trusted me and he had a find every time he stopped after me because i wanted him to learn trust me when i'm stopping it's just because you've gone off the line you've gone here or whatever because he's got an exceptional nose so i'm just letting if i i built that confidence of him have holding an area finding stuff now i'm learning to not me learning i'm teaching him to rein him in now and say right i might need to handle you we need to tighten that up you know because in the early stages when i'm teaching especially retrieving i just want confident dogs out there i don't get handling until probably one of the last things i teach out of everything is handling because i want them powerhouses and i drive people mad with it but i like confident dogs who know what the hell they're doing with that nose because they've got a bloody good nose and i want them to use it and if i can handle that dog less for me that's better i don't if i am going to need tanya i don't want to hand you a time i don't want to move i see some just stop left right so stop stop every inch it drives me mad you know stop a bit and handle if you've stopped in the right place because again it's all time and you got to think as well on why your dog's out there doing what it's doing but i do want that dog that's more likely to take my line better and be confident in the area because there are going to be times sometimes somebody sent you or something's up and you think something's there and you've probably been a little bit off so then somebody goes no george it's actually there and you can handle whatever but that's what i'm talking about this fine line so this is where i use the boarding because we've got somewhere one a place of value that i could send them to they've learned that pattern of going to it away because i've taught them distance to the place board so they know that already and now i'm going to put my stop paired in with it and like I said, I'll pay them on the board, build value in there, ready for when I do other exercises where I might send them there, then throw a dummy out, cast them, push them back, all that, or put dummies out, one behind, send them board first, then push them back, or you know. But don't be getting carried away with that. Practice just that, and and different distances to the board. Get even further for, and really put the value in there, okay, and then. Like I said, this is one way I start to bring it. I've got a lot of other ways I teach stop at a distance, which I will show later down the line. But it gets those who go, how can I start to progress it? So they understand that outrun, run, stop, run, stop, run, stop. OK, so like I said, when you start doing it, don't rush it. Just get that done, that bit done first of going to the board, stopping going to the board stopping going to the board stopping work on that work on that work on that work on that don't throw a million other stuff in till that's solid yep but also like i said don't don't try and hammer it on retrieves those who think they fairly got somewhere with that and like oh i can slightly stuff and retrieve all oh, that work like don't hammer it because you're just knock your dog it's important but there's got to be a balance with anything in life anyway there's got to be a balance but especially with that stop whistle handling out there it's so fine and it all depends on that personality of the dog you're gonna you know you're gonna get some of us so so one stop like, ah one stop oh, or just get out there and anticipate the stop you'll get the headstrong ones who will ignore your stops so you have to really work hard with them out there you know so you've got so many different characters but you build it up nice and slowly, putting them foundations in, just like if you were building a house, you need the foundations. And this is what this is. This is the number two on the stop whistle journey, okay? The amount of exercise loaded down the line is huge, but this is that next stage. Right, I've learned the cue around me here. They know to face me. Now I'm going, to, now I've done the place board at the distance. I've built that in. Right, now I'm going to teach the dog to go there and pair it with my stop building value on it okay so i'm going to show you in the clip after with little siddy how we teach it um sending them to the board um and what we're doing and that's all you're going to do for now all right okay so that is the next stage of starting to bring in distance with your stop whistle all right guys hope you enjoy see you later bye okay so this is how i would start to teach the dog to stop away from me Okay, so you've, you've heard in the clip um, about why we use it, what we use it, how we teach them, how the learning is for starting. So this is a start exercise. This is not going to totally...
solve every stop at a distance. This is the start of teach that dog to go away from you and stop and learn to stop on an outrun, okay? I'm not putting in in the presence of something else that they want and stuff like that as of yet, i.e. a dummy behind or anything like that off the place board. That can come later, but what I am going to do is because I've started in the earlier videos, you've seen I've taught them to go away to the board on a distance, um, from a distance to you, that now I'm going to pair my stop in with that, sending them to the place board, putting my stop on, so they learn to go out on the outrun and stop on the place board. Now, yes, you, some of you are thinking, oh, but we can't take the place board everywhere with us. The place board won't be like that on a retrieve. No, but this is just teaching that dog to stop away, running away from you and turning to face you. There are other exercises that I have to teach that behavior, to teach that behavior of leaving me stopping at a distance but this is just to get you started get the dog to go away from you turn and face you okay this one is very suited for that retreat what is it what is it darling what is it something spook you there hey so what i'm going to do is i'm going to again start near the board again because it's a slightly new picture and i'm going to build my distance and even though i've got the distance on the place board I want to just set him up for success so he knows exactly what I'm teaching him. With anything, I go back a few stages, re-break it down to the dog, um, set him back up on it, and so that they so that they feel like they can succeed, I can succeed, and then I can progress it on. What I love about this exercise is once I've got this, I can add so much to it. I can put food bowls out, I can put different directional stuff out, which will come later down the line. Um, teaching them to go away in the presence of things, stopping in the presence of things, loads of things, like I said, you can do with from the board. But this exercise, all I'm looking for is Sid to run the board, and as his paws touch the board, I'm going to put my stop on. As soon as he has listened to the stop whistle and on the board, I mark it and I'm going to go over and pay him. A bit like when you do the distance work um, on the place board, but I'm going to do it more formal because I want him to learn that formality. So, we're, like I said, we're learning to line up to the board okay so i'm going to start really short put my stop whistle on send him to it as soon as he hits it so what i'm looking for is virtually sit to go i'll say place him to go i'll put my stop on as his feet hit it as he turns to face me there i'll mark it and then i will repeat but i will grow my distance on it okay so this is teaching stop at a distance with using the place board further away from you. Again, this is just the start of learning that behaviour. This is not going to solve all your million stops out there. Also, what I might do midway is mix up my rewards on this one because when they're on the outrun, I want them to feel quite valuable. So he likes food, but I might give him the odd ball the odd time to really drive him on there. Okay, right, Siddy. I'm going to start fairly near it. Get him in position. All in the detail, remember? You, you know this one too well. Sitting. Place. Yes. So I go over and I pay him. Good boy. Good lad. Move a bit more distance, Sid. Sitty. See what I mean? I've taught it. I've taught it a lot. Place. Good lad. Good boy. Said feel. Place. Yes. Good lad. But it's teaching that run away from your side, okay? Obviously, as you can see, Sid has done this a fair few bit, knows this exercise well, so he's predicting, which I don't want him to go without me really saying otherwise, because they learn to pattern that and think, because I've built so much value in the board as well, he knows to go to the board, but I want Sid to go when I've said, not when Sid assumed, because it might be something different out there that I want him to do. Good 
lad. And the nice thing about this exercise is when we get good at it, you can start building duration in on your stop. So sometimes you can pause them quite a while so they get used to that you're not always going to rush them because if you overdo your stop too quick, they'll always predict something else is going to come. So having them on the ball sometimes just pause a minute with them because if you were out there handling, you might need them to get the head together because sometimes dogs lose the plot out there. Or we need to pause a minute while we're going to work work out what our next move is because sometimes people rush too much on handling so this time i'm going to reward him with a ball city a nice bit of a difference room so sometimes having a bit of variety of a reward thank you is a good thing okay especially when it comes to the stop like oh something good is coming do you know what i mean it's not just the food because for him he likes food he enjoys food but i know he prefers carrying things that's sid's go-to he loves to carry Sid. you also seen i pause more on that okay on, let's sort that out. Good lad. Did he? Thank you. Sit. Uh, no, no, no. Did he? Place. Yeah. Well, let's play with him a little bit. So he builds that anticipation of, oh, what are we doing? Yeah, good boy. Yeah, that anticipation up of, oh, something's going to come fun from you. Yeah, and I pause to a bit long there, longer duration, and then that stops. So he learns that the stop doesn't always mean bang, we're straight on to Because sometimes, okay, let's say if I was hunting, I'd stop him. Imagine I was in a test or something. Another dog might have to go for a retrieval work. He's got to stop and stay steady, not think, oh, I get back into hunting, or oh, I've got this, or that's my right trip. It might be, we might be pausing there. Sometimes something might be happening. He's got to stop and remain there. So it's that duration you can build in as well as the distance here, okay? So we'll do one last distance. sometimes what might happen when they predict the exercise okay so that trying to be pushy with me and actually I know it already I'll get there well no because if you, you don't want them thinking like that well I know what you're going to do but it's a bit of a self-employed behavior and I don't want that okay I want him to wait till I've said now I know it's because I've built value in that exercise and he is doing it right but he needs to go on my cue. It's just like, it's imagine it's like a tree falling and he goes, well, I know what you want me to do is go and get that, but I might not, okay? So it's important when you're doing this that they go when you say, okay? You make that formality with it.
I would start it. I've had a bit of fun with it, not just with food, but with his ball as well, okay? So like I've mixed it up. Find what your dog likes. Your dog likes to tug. go in and tug and play with them that they've stopped there. Pause a bit with it. Go in and feed them a couple of times. Make sure you mark it every time they land on the ball. Build the distance up. You might not get that far on your first try. Even if you get five paces, yeah? Still work on sending to ball without the actual stop whistle on, you know? But it's about him teaching that outrun. Like I said, you're gonna get that. They know what you're gonna teach as well. Be aware of that. As you can see on that last one, I was not sending him till I was ready, okay? So remember your criteria. And I'm glad you did that because you can see that that things can happen because some people just go oh god he's going that's perfect no we want him to go when we say go all right so that is how i would start in my early stages of the next progression starting to use the stop at a distance okay by using the place board i hope you enjoy it all right guys see you later mm -hmm.